Hello there, good evening. Trust your day has been good. Happy first weekend of 2024. Welcome to the English News Bulletin. Let's begin with the headlines. The Rwanda Food and Drugs Authority has suspended specific drugs at the local market, emphasizing that the move is intended to preserve the health of Rwandans. The Rwanda Agriculture and Animal Resources Development Board has announced that it is going to increase the number of machines available used to dry harvests in order to reduce potential losses. Glad to have your company tonight. My name is Olive Nete. Now to the news in details. Now let's start with health matters, how the Rwanda Food and Drugs Authority says that the suspension of certain drugs on the local market is aimed at preserving the health of Rwandans. We have details on the story. The Rwanda Food and Drugs Authority states that drug testing is done before the drug is manufactured, while it is being manufactured, and when it reaches the market. In this regard, during this week, the Rwanda FDA has issued a recall of four bulk batches of fluconazole 200 mg tablets produced in Kenya by Universal Corporation Limited. The Director General of the Rwanda FDA, Dr. Emil Bienvenu, explained some of the reasons why this type of drug was removed from the local market. Every drug has a certain color that does not change, but this particular drug has been changing colors as noted by the company in Kenya that manufactures it. And this has been revealed during an inspection done in the factory in Kenya, and the inspection was carried out by the Kenya Poison Board. The board immediately urged the factory Universal Corporation that manufactures the drug to remove the product from the market and also to inform all buyers who purchase the drug from the factory to stop selling it. The reason why such a process is followed is for people who bought those medicines to get a refund. The reason behind the suspension of the drug from the market is due to the fact that the change in the color of the drug manufactured may be caused by the manufacturing process of the drug. It could be the temperature at which it was manufactured that wasn't suitable. And this fact of temperature highly matters when manufacturing a certain drug since it may cause a change in color. Dr. Emil Bienveni says that the drug fluconazole is not completely removed from the market, but some of its batch numbers have been banned and have arrived in the country in the year 2023, imported by three companies. He explains the use of this drug. The drug is commonly used to treat fungal infections. These kind of funguses normally affect the mouth or throat, and these diseases are mostly attracted by people with a weak immune system, and they may also affect people with some cancers which also weakens the immune system. Some pharmacists also say that it is important to consider the quality of medicines. We highly appreciate this, and the inspection shouldn't be done only on drugs, but also on other important products that may affect people's health, because people's health is really something to take care of. Every drug should be on standard with a complete molecule. A drug shouldn't cause harm, instead, it should heal. A person just buys a drug and uses it as it was prescribed by the doctor or how the pharmacist instructs him or her to use it. But they should also keep the drug in a safe place. If the drug is supposed to be kept in the fridge, it should be kept there. And if it should be kept away from the sun, that also should be put into consideration to avoid damaging it. The Director General of the Rwanda FDA, Dr. Emil Bienveni, says that they are ready to continue inspection activities in the interest of public health. We also inspect and get to know how these drugs are manufactured to see if, in its manufacturing process, there was something done inappropriately that could damage the quality of the drug and also if it has some constituents that would affect people that consume it. The Rwanda FDA states that until now, there is no report of a person affected by the suspended medicine. Pharmaceutical companies and pharmacies are urged to return medicines imported to where they purchased them from. The Rwanda FDA says that until now, it has removed 123 batch numbers of drugs from the market. And most of these drugs are suspended due to the information that the agency has been receiving from the factories that made those drugs and other companies they work with. 
Now to agricultural matters with the Rwanda Meteorological Agency warning of heavier than usual rainfall during this month of January. The Rwanda Agriculture and Animal Resources Development Board has announced that it is going to increase the number of machines available used to dry harvests in order to reduce potential losses. Last year's maize harvest during this season amounted to 400,000 tons, and this time around as much as 623,000 tons are expected, increasing the need to ensure that as little as possible goes to waste. As much as 13.8% of maize harvest, 11.3% for beans, 24% of cassavas, and 12.4% of rice goes to waste due to poor harvest and storage practices. To other news, in the Chumbi district of the northern province, there is a community in Rubaya sector that has been waiting for more than 20 years to be given the land deeds of part of the local forest that were given as part of compensation package when they were relocated to make way for the construction of the local health center. The local residents say they are financially compensated for their houses, but it was agreed with the local authorities that they would get part of the forest as exchange for the land they had to vacate. They say over the years they have requested that they be given land deeds for the property to no avail, with subsequent local leaders doing nothing about the matter. The current district authorities say they are working with the Ministry of Environment to resolve the matter following laws that were passed over the years that prevent them from issuing the land titles. Of the 18 families that originally met the claims to the deeds in the sector, 15 are still waiting for them. To more news, those in Rwanda's steel industry say they are actively working to reduce the pollution that comes from their factories, while at the same time ensuring that their workforce has the required protective gear to do their work safely. This comes following recommendations issued by the concerned authorities. So since 2021, uh, we are regularly conducting the air, uh, air quality and sound. Both the audits we are doing it and we are doing it for two times a year. In between he has put some sensors for almost a year across six, seven places. Because we wanted to doubly sure, you know, what we are doing. Once we got the reports, we started working on so many things. Like, you know, segregation of uh, scrap, because scrap comes from everywhere. So, every point, you know, as you have seen, from getting the scrap to the full production line, every point we, we took steps to reduce the air pollution and noise pollution. We provided our people to safety equipments, right? We ensured that they are using it. Earlier also, we are used to give them. But you know, you know how people are. If you give them mass, they will not use it. So we started doing a lot of training programs to explain them that it is for you. It is for your health. So we did that. When we also reached to the community, we explained them that the nature of industry is such that you know you will have some, some noise pollution, some and we are trying to control it. So we also engage with them. We also engage with the REMA authorities and continuously we are telling them that what steps we are taking to reduce the air pollution and noise pollution. So we are working with everybody, with the community also we are working, we are working with the government organizations also, we are working with our people also, so that you know it's a full value chain who understands you know that our direction is very clear. And secondly, most critical is that it is embedded in our mission statement that we want to produce, you know, the, uh, the international quality locally. We want to produce it efficiently, responsibly and sustainably. To education matters, a group of students at the University of Rwanda's Huye campus say they have now been waiting seven months to receive laptops that they have already signed for, with some worry that they may graduate before they are given the machines that are supposed to help them to do their dissertations. The initiative to distribute the laptops had been suspended due to concerns over their quality and it was resumed in June last year with promises that the students would get them after three months at the latest. 
as part of BRD's Minusa program, but that is yet to happen. Administrators at the Huye campus say the delay was caused by investigations that were triggered by reports that some students that had previously been given the laptops had actually sold them, but reassurances have been given that the latest batch of computers will soon be distributed. Since being resumed in June last year, laptops have been given to government-sponsored students at the University of Rwanda's Remera Jikondo, Nyarujia Nje and Busogo campuses, but are yet to be distributed at Itsuye, Rukara and Nyagatare campuses. The laptops are given as part as a loan agreement that the students repay after graduating and getting a sustainable source of income. Now to today's health segment, Dr. Regis Francois Chiza, the Director of Health Facilities Program Unit at the Rwanda Biomedical Center, delves into the significance and extended breastfeeding beyond the recommended six months of exclusive breastfeeding. Take a look. Uh, between 2000 and 2005, uh, we had really a great improvement uh, where we came from uh, for the exclusive breastfeeding, we came from 71% um, uh, up to 87%. However, since then, in 2005, uh, the rate of exclusive breastfeeding has uh, slightly and gradually decreased. The exclusive breastfeeding around currently at 81% at 81%, uh, uh, while uh, those uh, who have complementary feeding up to two years, uh, they are uh, now around 80% based on the data of Rwanda Demographic Health Survey of 2020. And of course, uh, this depends on the lifestyle, uh, which are changing, but at least we are happy that uh, still we are among the countries who are really uh, breastfeeding exclusively well. For the exclusive breastfeeding, we encourage mothers to breastfeed as often as uh, even the baby needs it. Uh, however, the standards are at least uh, eight times in 24 hours, means uh, like every three hours, mother should really breastfeed uh, the baby during this period of six months. Mm -hmm. However, as we go beyond six months, uh, we need the complementary uh, food uh, to breastfeeding, where there is a need to add uh, some supplements, foods, milk, uh, fruits, and others. Uh, to ensure we, we meet the needs of the baby uh, to allow uh, the baby to grow well. So in that case, uh, the frequency starts to decrease uh, and even can even, you will find that when we are reach, uh, like approaching around two years, uh, it can even be four times a day, uh, four times a day and so on. It depends on the frequency of feeding of that baby and the availability also of the mother to breastfeed. Even beyond the six months, uh, during the complementary feeding, there is a need to continue breastfeed because still uh, the breast milk, as I said, it's uh, one of the balanced diet the safest one, because it doesn't have some microorganisms, uh, it has uh, or uh, it is also easy to digest, uh, which is sometimes different from the cow's milk, where we even recommend mothers to use those cow's milk when the child is beyond one year. Uh, because uh, like those cow's milk, they have some uh, proteins which may imp uh, impair the absorption of some nutrients like uh, iron uh, to babies and sometimes they end up by having like anemia. Uh, and also you will find that sometimes 
in the complementary feeding, many people may, may be hard for them to have really a well uh, balanced diet. So with, the, with this breast milk, which we know it has almost all nutrients, it helps to uh, prevent the malnutrition and also it helps for the growth uh, of those baby where really they are growth uh, in size but also in the development of the, uh, their brain and so on. Uh, from even at birth, we ensure the baby is breastfed in the first hour of uh, being born. Where uh, health uh, professionals in health facilities where those mothers uh, have delivered, they ensure the baby is put on the breast, uh, on the breast of the mother in the first hour of breastfeeding. They start counseling uh, of the mother on how uh, to breastfeed, the importance of breastfeeding, and also they um, encourage, they encourage and support uh, that mother to breastfeed. And even when there are some challenges, we find that uh, many mothers in the first day of life, they are complaining they don't have enough uh, breast milk. Uh, but even the, the little milk which is there, it's really, um, it's enough for that baby because that baby, uh, the digestive system is still small. The more the baby is breastfed, fed, the more it stimulates that breast milk to come. Of course, there are even some campaigns in the pla place, especially uh, those which are related to the prevention of malnutrition. We encourage mothers to keep breastfeeding as very often as possible. Because uh, even if we complement the breastfeeding, but nothing can replace the breast milk. But uh, even at community level, the community health workers, they have uh, some regular visit to those mothers and they encourage them to uh, continue breastfeeding, the importance of breastfeeding and even they help them uh, when they have some challenge related to breastfeeding. In addition to encouraging even mothers to express their milk, uh, we, some institutions now, we start now to ensure they are some uh, day um, day, uh, day care settings where even uh, those mothers after three months they can bring their babies uh, at work and this may allow to breastfeed as often, uh, very often as possible. Thank you for being part of our news today. Have a fruitful weekend. Take care and goodbye.